Hello and welcome to the Chilled Cardano podcast. I am at Ill Noise. This is at Chilled Cardano, um, aka Mike and Eric. Mike, how are things this week? Pretty good. It's Independence Day here, Independence Day weekend, Eric. So I'm pretty excited. Nice little three day weekend. Getting it going right. Talking Cardano. Shooting off some lots of fireworks. I still got on my fingers. Nice. So that's good. That's exciting. Um, I I lost a couple, but we'll get them back. <laughs> okay, that's not all that you know. What? No, <laughs> no, I know a guy. It's fine. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll be honest. I was a little a little down in the dumps this week about uh, the bear market. You know, it's just really just really Speaking hitting me. Yeah. yeah. But, um, what part of it? Uh, I think the whole Voyager thing really, you know, Ooh, yeah. really hit home for me. And I was like, oof. I had a little money on there. Not a lot, but like... Enough to make old, it hurt? Enough to be like, why am I so dumb? Like, why was I still trusting it, you know? They seemed like a legit, you know, exchange. So for them to be in like scary territory where you like, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, yeah. It's troubling. Um, but I mean, they did well, make some dumb mistakes with like relying on three AC. Yeah. Um, well, let's get into it. Let's talk yeah. about it because I think, like you said, it, it hits both of us because we were both avid users of Voyager. So um let's talk what happened and then we'll talk about the bright side of it because i'll I'll give you some hope i'll give you some hope you let's go let's do it uh we can show the chart real quick nothing has really changed um someone's laying on the horn outside so that's cool uh see if i could find I got an email from them, which was cool to see. Like, hey, we might not have your money anymore, but but we'll see. Uh, hold on. BT Dubs Coin Market Cap has added all of uh, MinSwap's tokens, so basically all Cardano tokens are now on Coin Market Cap, which is cool. That's nice. <laughs> um, this is something new. I think I didn't see this yet. There's nothing more critical to us than our customers. Please know that we are focused on protecting assets and maximizing value for all customers as quickly as possible. We currently have approximately 1.3 billion crypto assets on our platform, plus claims against Three Arrows Capital of more than 650 million. We also have over 350 million of cash at Metropolitan Commercial Bank. We are doing everything in our power to best serve our customers for the long term. We are actively pursuing a series of strategic alternatives to do just that. We'll share more updates when we have them. So that's like very cryptic. It's like some hopium, it sounds like. Um, But I mean, they did throw out some numbers, I guess. Well, here's the Uh, other thing. This place is based in the United States. So... But it is publicly traded. Yeah, so I think you'll have another company come in and buy them out and like give them a worse deal, but at least like um uh regular retail will be compensated. I don't know when, but I think within the next couple of months you'll be made whole. Especially if you have less than $250,000, I think because they're FDIC insured you'll get something in worst case scenario, there will be a class action lawsuit down the line. You'll get your money back. Yeah. Um, well, here's, think- the deal. here's the deal. You'll get the USD value of what it is. Now, hopefully at that point, everything doesn't start pumping again. Cause you'll be in a situation where it's like, they're like we're giving it at the bottom. Right. What it was well, worth well, whatever. Right. Exactly. So that's the one thing. Hopefully they can get this cleared up. The thing I, I think you need to look at too and watch is um the other company that folded, which was Blockfolio or BlockFi. 
which was yeah. lending out Bitcoin, they just got bought out and their deal went through and it was whole. So all their clients were made whole. And this just happened this week too. So I think you that should be okay. FTX, right? That was not with FTX. That was with, um, I think they were talking about, maybe FTX did buy them out. I'm not sure. But I, uh, somebody came in and like saved them because uh, there's another huge hedge fund that if FTX bought BlockFi, they were going to lose all of their um, investment. So like, uh, I don't know if you ever have watched Anthony Papliano Pomp, his, his company, Morgan Creek, where the big BlockFi guys, they like right at the Pico top of like <laughs> Bitcoin, uh, he invested another $150 million. So I don't know if his group came in. Yeah. Because if not, he would have lost all that money, which is pretty, br- I mean, $150 million is a lot of money to lose. Yeah. So I guess with Voyager, I don't know if we really told the whole story, but it, basically on July 1st, they paid out rewards to people. But then they're like, we're shutting down trading and withdrawals and transfers and basically like everything um, until we're in a like a better place to serve our customers. And it was kind of like left out in the open. And, and then you go to like Reddit and stuff and people are like, oh, it's, it's over. You know, everyone's like it's all like black and white, like it's either done or there's like, oh no, there's, it's nothing, dude. Your funds are safe or whatever people say. (laughs) But um, yeah, that's from a a tweet from uh, CZ back in the day when he had a typo on Twitter and he said, uh, don't worry, everybody, your funds are safe, but he spelled it safe and just, it's one of those things uh, where they hold all. See, these are the things I don't know being somewhat new but um but yeah i i have a feeling like i was thinking about it more and i was like someone's gonna buy them out because like first of all they're they're not like a top tier platform but they're probably like second tier and if if they just like let them die off like all those customers and stuff are never going to come back and it's just going to hurt like crypto as a whole. And like the price of everything would probably dump as well. Um, And then it's just like, then the dominoes keep falling, you know? So I think someone plus like all that user data that Voyager has, like someone's going to want that, you know, someone's going to want all that, those accounts and stuff. So I have a feeling like they're not done, but they'll probably get bought out or something. I but think it's just like too. concerning that this keeps happening. Like, and then it's like, oh, the next player is like a little bit more reputable than the last, you know? And uh, you just hoped that people were a little more responsible with like people's funds. So I was always like anti uh, Coinbase and stuff, but I was like, they're just like the banks and stuff. But I'm not, but now I'm like, I, I guess I should trust these bigger entities. Like, just for the <laughs> just for the purchasing part, I don't like keep my money yeah. on there. No, but, never. Um. So yeah, it's hard no, to it's really right. trust You're anyone. Right. Well, here's the issue. It's not like their protocol their their systems are fine it's the fact that at a bigger level once you're like a billionaire the fact that they're lending these people money without any collateral whatsoever is the issue so they lent out what like 650 million dollars to 3ac which is the big fund that has screwed up this whole space because 3AC has borrowed from every major lending platform and basically created their own little Ponzi to long everything. And when everything crashed, starting with Luna, it created a domino effect because all those companies started asking for their money back. But they didn't have it because they were trying to 
they lost over a billion dollars with Luna. And so like within those next following weeks, they were trying to make trades to make it all back in one trade, which is something you should never <laughs> so do, crazy. right? It's so crazy. And it blew up in their like, face. We might as well lose it all at this point. Like it's all or right. nothing. And they've like totally handicapped this market for, I don't know how long. Um, it's bad. Uh, I think you're looking at basically anybody who's over leveraged, who's borrowed a shit ton of money and needs that and needs to pay it back really soon is going to go bankrupt. And you're starting to see a lot of these companies, like a lot of Bitcoin miners as well, who they thought, we, I mean, everybody thought we were going to like 150. And when we didn't, it really screwed up a lot of people's trades. Um, so now we're in this place of a whole new paradigm where we've broken the 200 day moving average, which basically means Bitcoin's gone under 20,000 and it's stayed there. And now it's like, we're kind of waiting to see who else is bankrupt to see if we, if those, if those companies need to sell more. And so there's a potential downside to like maybe 12,000. And mm -hmm. um, I think, and let's just be real with the people. I mean, I mean, we could see Cardano go down to like, you know, 25 cents. Um, at that price point, I'm like licking my chops because yeah. you could buy so much ADA for that, you know, especially with all this stuff coming online. I'm just like, I'm here. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. So it's, it's like for me, just to buy something that like a year ago was $3 is absolutely insane. Um, but we're just dealing with like the macro market right now. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, just make sure you're taking care of your regular real life bills and then whatever left, just try to buy as much Cardano as you can. Cause uh, you're just seeing with the Vasil hard fork coming in the next four weeks, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be really interesting to see all these uh, lending platforms that we have, like um, our, our uh, what is it? Dejed stable coin. Yeah. Um, it's coming online. Um, I don't know if our Don is coming online. I'd, I'd hope so. I think liquid finance, um, maybe Maladex. There's a lot of protocols that are like that next generation where it's a uh, Cardano native first that yeah. I think has the potential to do a lot of interesting things. And you can't, you can't, you're going to want to be here for that, I think. So on that sneak tip, I, I'm trying to get as much of that as possible. I think it's probably about time to start accumulating liquid again and um, trying to trying to beat the market to that trade. Yeah. But yeah, it's come down quite a bit. It's at like 56 ADA now. Is that like 120 at one point? So uh, I think that one has a bright feature. Um, but yeah, we're still in like an accumulation phase, you know. Um, now, how how are you feeling, Mike? <laughs> like you're you're new to this space. You've been here for a year. Are you like totally like defeated at this point, or do you still think there's? I'm not defeated. Just optimistic but I'm for like, the future. I'm optimistic for the future, but it's like, Jesus Christ, how long is this shit gonna last? Like. <laughs> I was like, okay. Cause like when I first got into it, it was like so fun, you know, when everything's going up for the most part. Um, and then I saw like a big dip, but then it came right back up for a while. And so it's hard to adjust to like realizing like that's not the norm, you know, the right. norm is like these long cycles. So, um, I'm optimistic for the future, but uh, it's hard to like keep like diving into new NFTs and stuff like that when it seems like there's no excitement around that kind of stuff. So like it makes it kind of lame that we can't continue playing in that sandbox and like, unless it's like a long-term play and uh so I think it just changes my 
approach to be like what's going to be around when this stuff turns around and is really going to um make a difference like financially so i think i'm more turning to like blue chips and stuff like that and projects that look like they're going to have a lot of utility or i really like as opposed to at first i was just kind of like oh here's a new thing let me get this one here's another new thing let me get that one um but as far as ada i am still just like dca and uh it's it sucks to watch it meander like this and then and then eventually break down again you know like it's like demoralizing but um i'm young so i could afford to stick around and like just have this like accumulated ada and just like hoping waiting for it to turn around and um i think the worst part is like the overall economy is depressing <laughs> so like yeah it's so for depressing. us to break out in this overall economy is like unlikely so i know we're at like the whim of that so i don't blame like you know crypto it's more like these wall street people that kind of gambled with everyone's money and now we're all paying for it i guess you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think and, like, it, i think it'll be I'm fine personally fine like financially yeah. and everything but it's just like this which is uh better than what i probably could have said like 10 years ago you know yeah. i would have been not even like doing this because i wouldn't even <laughs> i would have, have been money like, how do i get gas money right right but um but it's like you get so emotionally invested and then you're like, I just want to be right. <laughs> you know, like I want to be right about this. And then, and, he, and here's the thing that you have to think about too. It's kind of like, you have to zoom out and be like, like, is this stuff going to stick around? But then like, to me personally, I, I have insane optimism for humanity and like progression and it's like ever since we've had the internet, you've seen the evolution of humanity increase and in like our connection to each other and just like the progression of like, um, I, I think AI is going to be huge. And you have to think about how this stuff gets decentralized. And then you just like, you start to make connections in your mind, be like, how does all this, how is all this stuff going to play out? Like, like, then you start to realize that we actually need a lot of this uh, technology for us to yeah. like start to evolve as a human like humanity like you need like if the internet's going to be here for the next 10 to 20 years like like it's not going anywhere right like people aren't turning their smartphones off you know what i mean like if you started to see people not use their smartphones then i would be worried but it, it to me it seems like you're having the internet of things where literally every fucking electronic has a smart chip inside of it that's talking to the internet and if like that's the case then you're gonna need um, you're gonna you're gonna need um, some digital value to like exchange like in smart contracts, and it's like, well, how do you do all that stuff without a blockchain or smart contracts? And and so to me, it's like, well, if the internet is gonna is gonna continue on, then then it needs to evolve. And how does it evolve? It, it evolves through blockchains. It evolves through a decentralized mechanism like Cardano to like exchange value through different like wallets and stuff. And um, I mean, not only Cardano, but obviously like Bitcoin and Ethereum and like all these other networks. And I just, I just have more optimism in humanity and the fact that like we have the smartest people in the world building this stuff. And there's gonna be like a lot more surprise, surprises in the future. Like you have DeFi and stuff like that. That's, that's here, that's not going anywhere. And I, I just see it like um, every single corporation is going to have NFTs and it's just like such a smarter way to start building out like, um, like different, um, 
reward systems for your for your clientele like starbucks rewards or walmart yeah. or you know what i mean like all this stuff where it's like they're giving you value or like like you could use amazon gift cards or like you get five percent uh cash back on your purchases like wh- like i would rather have that be a decentralized thing where i can change that value for something else that i needed instead of leaving it on a gift card in in my uh junk drawer for two years you know what i mean yeah so i i just to me it's just like well if the internet's going to keep evolving and becoming a better thing we're going to need to decentralize it away from these web two companies and how does that take place like okay then you're going to need to move to a web three where you have these uh nft communities and stuff that like create value like it started with art but i think as this space evolves and people are here for multiple years you're going to see some really interesting things start to happen. And like just being here now and learning about this space and sticking it out when no one's here, where you can uh, really understand white papers and like read like who the smartest people are in the space. And you could start to allocate money there and just leave it. Like when this thing turns around, you're going to be so much better off than just like turning everything off and then coming back in five years and being like, okay, like, you kind of like you could do that too but i think you're just going to miss out on those amazing opportunities where you're 100 xing 1000 xing your money like yeah and also like you have like you could just just as easily buy cardano put it on um one of your wallets and stake it for four percent a year i mean that's way better than your bank account like i keep looking for opportunities because like, I, I think we have some more ways to go for this bear market. And it's like, where am I going to get the most interest for my money? Or like, you know, oh, let me start buying houses, right? And it's yeah. like, you look at that market and it's going down the shitter. And you're like, well, like, you're starting to see the housing market collapsing. And it's like, well, in six months, like, why would I buy one now? And I could probably get one in like five to, uh, to 12 months, like 50% cheaper. It's like... I'll just wait. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's still like inflation still high. Not my house like, though. So, my house is going to maintain its value. Of, of course, dude. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's different. That's a different. Thing. Specifically, yeah. <laughs> Here in Chicago, not uh, the East Coast. Yeah. But, um, um, and I just think that's the kind of like, th- these are the times where you just kind of need to, you know, turn everything off and kind of just meditate on like what you see, how this, how do you see the future playing out? Like, where do you see everything going? Like, as far as like technology and evolution and like, how does that, how does that stuff start to work and connect to each other and talk? And it's like, just start to make assumptions in your own mind and, and, and make your best guess. And for me, it's always been like Cardano and like Bitcoin and, um, yeah, I think I think Ethereum is broken, but that's another conversation. Um, but that's why I'm not going anywhere else because I look around and I see everything that's being built, and I'm just like, you have like teams like AGI who who are building decentralized AI that like um, you'll be able to put inside of your DApp to talk to other DApps, and like, I mean, how do you how do you beat that? You know what I mean? Like, and I'd also rather invest it in that than give it to Google. And have Google run my life for me. I mean, I love Google. Google's great, but it's just like at a certain point, it starts to get weird when it's giving me my itinerary for a flight that I have and it knows exactly where I'm going. And it's like, like it's convenient, but at the same time, it's like, Jesus Christ, like this is terrifying sometimes that it knows so much about me. And, it knows and like I have no say. You're going to want to watch. Well, that that's evening. good. I, I like that. <laughs> that's a good AI. It's already, it's already <laughs> turning the porn on for me at night. I need that on your Amazon Echo, and it's already <laughs> Amazon's already ordered the lotion that I enjoy. So <laughs> that's you know you're in a sweet spot right now. You don't want to throw that <laughs> throw that off. Uh-uh. But yeah, I think the only shitty part is like when Cardano's down, like all, all some of the people that are building like have to stop because the, they don't have money anymore. You know right which but is that like, that that kind of sad but that's it's sad but at the same time like you have to look at those teams and be like this is why you don't hold your reserves for your team 
in the asset like that is so volatile because it is nice when it goes up from 50 cents to three dollars but when it's when it's like okay i'm paying my team for the next six months in cardano and it goes down 50 percent. okay now i have two weeks of pay for these guys instead of six months that's fucking yeah. brutal you know what i mean so the team that comes out of this alive and realize that you should have kept your reserves and um us dollars or the euro um what is the is it the euro um that's way better than like it sucks that like that reserves it's like a million dollars is going to be a million dollars and it's not going to go up or down Uh, but at least you can build out for the next two years with your small team and like like just keep learning because you can make mistakes and be like okay i'm still here like let's build something else like okay that project didn't work like oh maybe my tokenomics are wrong like you know mint swap I'm sure they're doing great. Sunday swap, like these, they still have, because people are trading, they're getting the fees. They're able to pay yeah. their team, you know? But these smaller projects like Crypto Dinos, who <laughs> is specifically a team you're talking about, like they, they should have known that something like this could happen. It's just like, it blows my mind, like being in the space since 2018. I mean, I've known about Bitcoin since, 2014 2013 and just seeing this thing go up and down like it, it's going to mind fuck you like this is a whole totally new way to think about money and like whatever you think is impossible <laughs> is possible so yeah. like but it's like also one of those things for me where i see like the potential of it and just the way everything is going like i just think it's going to come down a lot but because of all that downward selling pressure like when it goes back up, it's gonna be like fireworks. Like it's gonna go up so fucking fast because like the the price point of buying this stuff is so unnatural, you know, no knowing where it can go. It's just like people are I'm telling you behind That's the true. scenes, dude, people are licking their chops for these prices. And they just know that like retail is gonna flood in because plus the tech is just so they'll bad. see like the history. The historical chart and be like oh we're not even close to the all-time highs right now and the, the money just floods in you know and then it's like a whole new cycle of new people that like are just learning about crypto and are getting excited about it yeah and like but, people think it's dead they always like there's a thing that reads all the bitcoin's dead articles and for the rest of the market space too but um like there's so much opportunity here now as opposed to 10 years ago where nothing literally nothing was happening and like the bear market would be like four years long and it was like like you truly didn't know if there was gonna be this space but like there's so much money here now and so many people see like opportunity and you you just see people everybody's working from home (laughs) like yeah like the, the internet is becoming a part of society like it is becoming like the backbone of society so it's like you're gonna need to trade value on that and you're gonna have to do it digitally you can't use a paper dollar i'm sorry it's not gonna work it's like you know what i mean yeah it just doesn't make sense anymore and and to me that's where you have to go back to first principles and realize like okay like like i'm shook but i'm not leaving like like if you're leaving now it's it's almost like you're missing the whole point of the space and i don't know like it's to me it's one of those things where i I just see such a bright future for it that it's just like i'm like i'm not i'm I'm not phased like i'm just not yeah i'm phased but i'm still here mike well i think that's one of those things real bear market you know yeah i've been through a little bit but the thing that I haven't experienced that I experienced this time is with Voyager because I was a, a avid user of Voyager and I feel terrible for Eric because I I told Eric <laughs> to start using Voyager back in the day. I mean, That's I've true. been using Voyager since like 2018 when they first started coming out because it was one of the only places to buy ADA that wasn't Coinbase. Um, so I personally been using it, but at the same time, I've never like kept too much on there. Like. Like whenever I could, I would just start taking it off, taking it off, taking it off. 
uh, my, just because I've seen so many exchanges. Good. Yeah. Um, I went through a period where I had like a lot on there, but recently I was, I was like taking it out every week. Like I would, I buy like with my paycheck or whatever, whatever I'm going to buy and then take it off the second it like clears, you know? Yeah. Of course, it was like in between that period when I, they went down, but um so question what exchange do you recommend now see that's not the, that that's the hard you. part not that you should trust me but <laughs> um right Heard now kraken is that a good one kraken is like a good one. one here's the issue what we're having right now with this whole three ac thing we don't know who else is affected by this? We don't know who else lended the money and we're not going to know for a month. So my best recommendation right now is to not invest any more ADA right now. Mm. And I, I know a lot of people won't like to hear this, but until we like, I would give it four to six weeks, to be honest with you, save up your cash reserves, just let it sit in your bank account. And once we, once we see who's really affected and who hasn't come back, um, cause let's be honest, like nothing's happening this summer. Like un until the money spigot comes back on in September, I think at the earliest, right before midterms, you're not going to see the market move too much. We might get like a fake pump, like fake breakout. Yeah. Um, and then it might oh, go wait. lower. That was not financial advice, right? This none of this is financial advice. Okay, none of yeah. this is financial advice. Um, but like I do, I do use Coinbase as well. Um, do they let you transfer right away? Or do they also right like away? Hold That's on? the nice oh. thing. That's the nice thing about Coinbase. They do let you transfer right away, but they take out like your your um. So Voyager does it different, right? So you buy, let's say, ten dollars, you get fifteen ADA, and then when you transfer it out, they charge you. A transfer fee right with coinbase they'll take the taxes out right away so you buy 10 bucks they'll take their they'll take their it's insane that's the problem with coinbase they'll take like 10 percent of that Ooh, but then yeah but then you transfer for free so it's like it's like voyager does it, it on the, the back front. end yeah coinbase does it on the front end but at the end like you can instantly transfer that off of coinbase which is nice Cause it's like, if you want to buy an NFT or something, you see something minting. <laughs> Not that I've done that. I degenerate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like Coinbase for that. Kraken, um, I've tried to use it a couple of times. Their KYC is a little harder to deal with, but I, I would use, I think Kraken's okay. Um, I haven't, I haven't used it, so. I believe Binance is good. But yeah. I, like I said, I, I just think I would give it a couple of weeks. Let's let's see who else is affected by this 3AC thing. And then after all the smoke has settled, then I would continue to dollar cost average in. But um, right now, every gateway is a risk. So it's like you almost can't trust any of them until this shit gets figured out. Which sucks because it's, it's the risk. only way to buy ADA. What's that? Uh, this cool game called ADA Ninjas uh, Shards. Nice. Let's get uh, into it, Eric. Let's. So I've already played this a little bit, Mike. Sorry to change topics so fast, but hold on. It's like really loud. So let me turn it down. Sick sound effect. Can you hear it now? <laughs> so, Mike, you played this a little bit too, right? Yeah, I have. A little lower. Okay. Um, it's really loud. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we don't need the sound. Get... We'll mute it. Okay. So, there is music, guys. We give you a little, really little sample, loud. but we don't need to play it the whole time. It's also very hard to talk over it. Um, yes. So I'll give you a little taste. So before um, let's let's uh, what of what do all these icons mean? And like, also this is Ada Ninjas. 
It's an NFT yes. project. This is their game that they've created. And the idea behind it is that like, um, you'll use your NFT, you'll connect it to the game, and then you could use that skin of whatever NFT you have to play in the game. And you could also buy uh, inventory with it. You could shop, you know, play to earn kind of thing. Yep, this is my my chick. She, I already got her some legs. Um, nice. No, did so you have to buy those? I earned them by playing okay. the game. Um, Very cool. So I don't, I didn't really like read the rules, but I was just messing around. But I think like the batteries up here are like how many times you can play per day, um, and it costs five energy to play so um and then i think it like i think if you wait long enough it recharges but so you, you can play and then you earn these other things um there there's these like cards you can win and then you can use those to do like a bigger clan war um so it's kind of interesting I'll show you how the game is played. And then like you earn these rewards and then you can buy, you can buy like inventory with them. Um, it's probably laggy because I have zoom going on, but I mean, you can dash Mike. You can dash if you want Eric's to. You can ask right now. Um, I think it looks, I mean, like it's a top down action based game. It's pretty, fu it's pretty cool. Like definitely something to kill time. I think it, this is an alpha. So let's give them some, you know, give them some credit. It's a like, simple game. Not a, it's very simple. Not a ton going on, but it's, I had fun playing it for a little bit. And, and this is the cool idea. thing, guys, because like this is the kind of thing you want to see out of these NFT teams. Like these guys literally built this whole game, you know what I mean? In like six months. So it's like they like you got to give them props to like be like, this is the kind of team you want to start investing in because like well, how many other NFT teams like we just talked about crypto dinos going under. And at the same time that that team said the market's bad, this they just released their game. So what does yeah. that mean? You know what I mean? Like, is it is the market bad or were you just bad with cash allocation? Like at the end of the day, these NFT teams are businesses. And if you yeah. don't know how to manage your money correctly, regardless of a bear or a bull market, like like you, you, like you need to be able to get through it and like continue to create a product for people to use. And if you can't make it through these bad times, then I have zero faith that you're going to make it through the good times too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, you gotta. I don't know. I'm sure they they started with not much of a plan or something, and then they had they're like, okay, well, let's do a game, and then things started going well, and then the bear market came and everything fell apart, and they're like, shit, we need to reassess how we're gonna do this, you know? Yeah, um, and I'm not and, saying that Crypto Dinos is not gonna come back. It might come back, but. I, oh, I guess I'll come back to... even stronger, Mike. <laughs> you better believe that. <laughs> I have faith, Eric. Um, um, go ahead. I'm just fucking clicking around. I'm so ADHD. Um, I have to turn off the, the screen share so I don't search token prices right now. Go ahead. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, you have to look at teams like, yeah, like if they're not making it through the bear market, they're not going to make it. Like, I just don't have, like, this is why it's so much for me personally. This is what makes it fun because the people who can truly last for this, those are those are where you want to put your money at, right? Because it's like, well, shit, like they built and they continued on through a bear market. Like, that's fucking yeah. hard. So it's like when that bull market comes back and all that money comes flowing in, those are the, those are the crews that are just going to, you know, they're, they're going to create, they're going to have more cash flow. They're going to be able to hire more people and deliver more products. Like same with like yummy universe. Like you could buy like plushy, like they just released their merchandise and 
I think that creates even more of like a connection with that team because it's like cool now I have like uh, real shit in my house like chilled, yeah. chilled Kongs what's up um, you know yeah and it's like I get a lot of looks when I go out and I wear this hat people are like what the hell is that icon you know it's you know and then you can have a conversation and grab them by the throat and I'm like, like is that guy a fruit or something <laughs> Uh, <laughs> well, you're cool. <laughs> then people start following you around at Walmart. Well, you have your own little. That's because I. It's because I hold my smartphone up with my NFTs and I'm like, hey, let me see that real quick <laughs> with full full brightness. Yeah, I think that the part that I get annoyed about is like people who are putting out stuff like a like a working game, and you know. That doesn't excite people for some reason. Like, if you look at the volume of Ada Ninjas, I don't think it's really changed that much. But if you put out like a new, like, um, I don't know, something copyright infringing on a movie and make it an NFT, people are like, oh, fuck yeah. Let me get some of that. Like, I don't get people's um, mentality when it comes to that sort of thing but everybody's incentives is different and like there's a lot of people who like in, these people who start to get flushed out as we could continue in the bear market but those those uh those one-off nfts where it's like uh, let's just make something up ada tunes uh comes <laughs> in and <laughs> that's a good one uh like they're they're gonna gonna be here for 10 minutes and then they're gonna be gone and they're going to be at the bottom of the ranking of uh, OpenSea NFT and stuff like that. So, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff's going to bother you as an investor because you're going to see shit where the the price uh, appreciation goes up really fast. And you're like, well, why the fuck isn't the thing that I'm invested in is going up as much? And it's just, you know, this is a long game. And the thing you know. that's going to make you the most money, I think, uh, where you can like truly like build a foundation uh that stuff because like on the way up it goes up fast but on the way down it goes even faster so it's it's not even like yeah like the the ada cats thing that just came out like it, it, it there was a thousand of them and they went from like 40 to like 200 real quick but then they're probably yeah. gonna come way back down you know what i mean so it's like um yeah, they already. I don't even. Like I don't even worry something. about it. I don't even care about it because I'm just like you look at their roadmap or what it's they're like building. A flash the, in the pan. It, exactly. So it's like I can't even invest into something like that because I'm not. I'm not going to pay attention to it. I'm. I'm invested in so many different NFT projects. I'd rather just hang out with chilled Kongs, claymates, um, because I know I don't have to look at my portfolio every day and be like, "Is it still there tomorrow?" You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's just like there's just too many things to worry about. And I'd I'd rather invest in things that are going to be here in six months than these these projects that are copying whatever is sexy on Ethereum and then duplicating it on Cardano and then you know they make their million dollars and leave or whatever. I just I'm sure it, some of them are like the same people, right? Like the hundred percent like scheme that works. Uh, yeah, it, and it's gonna keep working until it doesn't. And, uh, you know, that like we were talking about um, what was the one that you said it was going to go to 150 and then it went back down. Melting Moon Boys. Yes. Melting Moon something. Boys. So yeah. and I'm not, I, I think it's a cool project, but it's one of those things where it's like a lot of this stuff, because we have a lot of time, you can just like watch it like you don't have to yeah. buy it. <laughs> and then like yeah. once it gets to the, the, the price that you like, then you can pick one up. But it's like, that's, that's what um, I've been learning lately. Like you can just watch it. You're not going to miss the one that's going to miss like a hundred thousand ADA, you know? Yeah. It's especially In now, market. like nothing. Yeah. So this is the kind of time where you can watch a, a project like this and be like, well, do I still like it in a month? Because it's probably going to still be around that price point for me. And then I, at that point I can, you know, buy a couple if I really want to. Yeah. Um, 
but like everybody's building right now so it's just kind of fun to look into people's discords and you know like i mean we could look at disco solaris that community oh, yeah. is so goddamn strong dude and um the floor just keeps going up on this project like yeah i, like I cannot it. easily see this at mm. a thousand you know what i mean like they're very uh this, consistent you know like they're always uh putting stuff out there and i don't know it's just a really uh i think i said i didn't like it at first like the artwork but it has grown on me and uh I just think the idea is kind of cool, like building this city out and you're like part of the city basically and has music and all this cool shit. Like there's not a lot of projects that have that like whole, you know, universe around it. Well, and that's the thing, like most of the building is being done by the community. I haven't seen that on any other project. Like, most of the stuff yeah. that's being built is by the NFT team, like a claymates, like all that stuff that's being built for them is, is them doing it. Like with Disco Solaris, these people have truly taken this project and like, like, like you said, the music that that's a, that's a real person who's doing that on their own. They're not being paid by Disco Solaris. You know, they just, they all want to see this thing succeed. So you know, you're seeing a lot of like audiobooks being played out and like people are writing journals and all that creates to the narrative of this thing. And it, it, it creates lasting power for this whole universe that Disco Solaris is making. So yeah, it, it sucks people in, you know, people, people find this in six months and they're like, holy shit, I need this. You know, like I want one so I can start making my story with one of these NFTs, which is like, it's, it's very ours. interesting to watch. Yeah, you could buy mine at 580 <laughs> Disco Solaris 0047. <laughs> uh, I almost bought another one the other day, but I was like, uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't know. It seems to go up and down. like And like that Disco coin just got airdropped. So I think that's why you, you have that price appreciation. Did it get dropped yet or? That... I I they they took the snapshot, so I'm sure at oh. some point your your wallet will receive those disc coins, disco coins. That was by the community too, right? Yeah, yeah. Some it's guy bought cool. the Charles Hoskinson NFT Disco Solaris, and he uh, he fractionalized it, so the price that it was bought at is like what each coin is worth, which is that's so cool. Really interesting. Yeah. Imagine having that much money to just be like, well, this is yours now, community. Well, that's cool, well, that's too, because cool. it's like it was yeah. one person who invested that money, and now he gave it to everybody. It's, it's pretty interesting to see that someone would do that. But I you think they had, you know, about... a lot of... Sorry, go ahead. I don't know. A lot of people just have a lot of faith in this project. That's it. That's all. Um, we'll keep shilling it. We'll keep um, showing it, guys. You want to talk about keep the buying, controversial... Keep buying the floor. Sweep the floor. Controversial thing of the week. Let's get into it. So, Mike, Space Buds has been caught stealing. Or so uh, they're accusing themselves of. I don't know what's going on. But, like... I was just going through Twitter and they posted this thing about how they have discovered like a copy of one of their um, Space Buds design that was created previously. And I mean, here's the one on the left is the original from like 2018. And then the one on the right, I mean, it's pretty blatant. It's like the same exact design. Um, but it's interesting that they brought it up themselves. Like, I don't, I didn't see a lot of buzz around it, like until you know, they posted and to be it. honest, it was probably like a thing, like somebody DM them and been like, Hey, give us a hundred thousand dollars or else we're going to let people know that, you know, we found this and we're going to ruin yeah. your project. So 
Barry Ailes probably just came out and be like, well, I'll just do it myself, you know, which yeah. is pretty ballsy, which is pretty cool. I mean, yeah. Um, so that was interesting. I wonder what like, did uh, Monad Alexander I was going to look at you... that. Yeah. Uh, let's be clear illustration is not art. Space Buds place in Cardano has nothing to do with the illustrations it features. They could be photos of shit and it wouldn't change anything. P.S. I own none, so not defending my bags. So I guess <clears throat> he's saying that art, NFTs aren't art, I guess. So you can just copy. I think he's, you want. he's he's more or less talking about uh, like Space he's Buds as like a as a as a, a community it's yeah it's it's more about like what they're building that the icon represents the nft represents and it's not so much art for art's sake you know because let's be honest the art for space buds isn't great if they're yeah. cute but they're not like this inspires me to you know i'm not yeah. going to put this on my wall at my house <laughs> you'd be surprised <laughs> you know what i mean so, like yeah some people base their whole personality around NFTs, but not me. They basically put out that tweet and then I haven't seen any other like versions that are, you know, direct copies like that, but I'm interested to see if more come out. And they kind of said like, Hey, we paid this person to do the illustrations and I guess they copied some of them and we're looking into like if they copied other ones so we can like make sure we're not, you know, we're supposed to own the copyright to this stuff. So if it's copied, then that's a problem. But um, I guess it is hard to like know if something was copied, if it's not like a popular piece of art, you know, but I think if you're doing an art project, you should probably know someone that does art, you know, that's just my opinion, but. <laughs> I agree. And that's one of those things where it's like, uh, like claymates, like those two ladies who created claymates, they did it themselves. Right. So they're the team who did, so they don't have to look at whoever they hired as an artist to like vet them and be like, Oh, did they just reuse something from something else? You know? Yeah. Whereas Space Buds, Barry Ailes is a developer, like he's not an artist. So he hired, who knows where he got his artist from, but they, he trusted them to make the artwork for him. And like, I'm sure the price is going to go down a little bit, but like, yeah, I, I don't think Space Buds is going anywhere, to be honest. No, their community is too strong. Um maybe it'll go down to a price where I could pick one up, Mike. Uh, <laughs> so this doesn't, this doesn't don't... affect your thought on the future for space buds. Like, do you I think, think short term is? Yeah. It seems like no one cares that much. Like, a, yeah, I, I was looking at the discord as well. <laughs> like it's one thing for the discord to everyone be like, sh sh you know, brush it off, but. I mean, we could, let's go to JPEG store and, and see what's going on. Cause last time I checked, it was at 5,008 on the floor. Yeah. Let's take a look at that. Take a gander. JPEG store. Oof. Ooh, it's gone down one eight. Nope. Now it's back up. 5,008 is still. Um, one day gets sold for 499. It doesn't seem like people, you know, people aren't really panicking about it. And the people that hold them are pretty diehards. loyal. So it's unlikely that they're just going to like freak out and sell everything. But um, there is like the tendency for people to, you know, like defend their own. So even if it was like a blatant, stealing i don't think this community is going to be like oh well i guess space buds is done you know 
yeah they've invested too in boys. much yeah um and like and like yeah that like image was the same but like they did put them like, in astronaut suits and it's not a direct like one off rip off it's like yeah there is some differences so and I, it's not I, like I, their I main could... oh it is their main character never mind but um oops <laughs> Should probably change that one. Uh, yeah, let's change it, guys. Um, yeah, it's not the end of the world, I don't think, but it is. You would like to see more quality control with like top tier projects, I guess. Well, this is like the this is the problem. It's like the premier Cardano NFT project. Like people are like on Twitter, they're like, I'm like flipping NFTs to get a space buds, and now it's like, well is the artwork that I'm buying even like original and yeah. we're starting to see that it isn't. So it'll be interesting to see in the coming weeks, how far the price falls Yeah, to see how many people like lose hope. And especially in a bear market news like this is terrible for the price. So for the people who truly believe in it, give it a couple of weeks and you, probably might be able to pick a space buzz up for maybe like 3000 if you yeah. truly believe in it. I think honestly, like it did make me be like, ah, well, maybe that's not the goal anymore. Like to get up to a space buds. Now it's more like, uh, I'll keep, maybe I'll get another clay or something. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of, you know, because I held it in such a high regard and now it's like, oh, it's just another project that, you know, it just happened to get super popular. So it's slightly and they have enough. Opinion, I mean, if that's you, about it. If you look at the volume on this thing, <laughs> 28 million, yeah, like, they, they have enough money for the next 10 years <laughs> to yeah. create uh, more utility for this project. Yeah. So I, I think they'll be just fine. For sure. Um, but yeah, that I think that was one of the main things I wanted to cover. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about? Such um, as wa wallets at the front of a front end of web three. Or is that yeah, I was just yeah, I was just thinking of like people are like always battling of like what blockchain is going to win and what and what but like you're starting to see like the way people utilize especially like smart contract platforms is through these wallets like a metamask or an eternal wallet for cardano and i think um and you're seeing like cardano came out with their like premier light wallet client which is going to be lace which looks super sexy and it's like super fast and it's all it all takes place on the web um and like let's be honest like that's how we interact with most of these apps anyways just you, you go in your your internet browser like brave and then you um connect with your wallet and that's how you utilize the network and especially on mobile too it's everything's within eternal wallet so i was just thinking like I think whoever has the best wallets is going to win in the next five years. So like having yeah. like that lace and eternal wallet, like that stuff is so important to get people on. And I think um, most people aren't going to invest in the blockchains. They're just going to buy, like use the, use the apps. Right. And they're going to download the wallet to use the app. And they're not really like, they don't really care about Cardano. They don't care about Solana or, ethereum yeah. they're just like i just want to use this app and and i think it's going to be really important um and luckily we have a team like um flint wallet who are they kind of already saw this like months ago where they're already building their wallet and then they're connecting they're they're already using cardano mm -hmm. and they're also using solana and they're using algo on the back end so I think as we go farther and farther along, um, 
no one's going to care what blockchain you use. Like they're just going to look at the, like if you're going to farm DeFi, they're going to look at your APYs to see which one's the best. And they're not going to care if it's on Cardano. They're not going to care if it's on Solana. They're going to look at the percentage, right? To be like, wow, that's yeah. a lot. Like, and that's how they're going to use these platforms. They're going to look at a video game. They're like, wow, that's a cool video game. It's called Ada Ninjas. Oh, can I play it? Like, what do I need to play it? Like, it's going to be like downloading Steam, right? And then you open up Steam and you play that game. Yeah. So um, I think it's really important for us as a community to like really have really nice front-facing wallets. And everything else is going to be taken away like a lot of the complicated shit where you open eternal wallet and there's a bunch of numbers that are getting thrown at you like they're gonna have to clean all that up like <laughs> yeah because pe- like you open it up and it is I'm nice pretty... once you get in the d app browser but that for yeah initial page could be like you know a lot for someone who doesn't know what it's what it is yeah it's like what are all these numbers mean like there almost needs to be a tutorial before you can even press buttons. You know what I mean? Like, like, because this is all virtual too. It's like when you play a new video game, like a halo or something, or like, um, what's that new one that they have? The bungee built Among destiny, us. destiny, where it's like, you open up the video game and you, you, you're, you start, you have the control in your hand, you're playing the game. And as you walk through, it starts to teach you how to play the game. We almost need that same type of approach when it comes to these wallets where you open it up and it's like, you can do whatever you want, but you, you almost want tutorials to be like, hey, while you're on this page, uh, this button and this button is utilized on this. You know what I mean? And then you can keep going where, you know, I think that's gonna be super important um, just to hold people's hands. Cause a lot of this stuff is super complicated for people who aren't in it, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I think the, even the seed phrase is like a huge barrier for most people to get over. Like, how do you explain that to someone, you know, and yeah. how do you get them to know that it's important and not just be like, Oh yeah, I wrote it down somewhere whatever, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, but I think, and I think there should be like, there needs to be like a wallet with an on-ramp for like, dude. Yeah, you know? And then we it need, would we just need it cut, so bad. cut out the middleman and just. There is one, it's called the um, Jira wallet for ADA, but the fees on it are fucking stupid, dude. They're so uh, expensive that it yeah. makes it. I thought like, there was one, but I couldn't remember. It, it's sure. almost 20% just to like it's too much you know what i mean so we need something that's like lower fees that can just one on-ramp that's just seamless where it's like right away like you said on coinbase where it's like i put in 20 bucks i get my ada right away yeah and it's the it's just like they're not basically stealing money from you because they're doing you a service it's just like i don't understand why they need to take so much you know what I mean? Like, it's probably just like there's more liability when you're dealing in cash, so they right. have to make it worth it for themselves. Yeah, they almost need like a partner, you know, like who, like powered by Coinbase or something, you know? Yeah, but then yeah, 100%. it's like a whole another, you know, whole another thing you have to deal with when you have someone else involved in your project, but. That's that's one of those things where I want to see in the future um, there be uh, fiat uh, on, on ramps everywhere. I want to see it everywhere, like every protocol, like Ardana, Liquid Finance. I want them all to have a cash on ramp, you know, because it's yeah, it's a pain in the ass to like, especially with all these exchanges. You just I want so much less trust between that shit because it's. It's like it, we have to get away from these centralized exchanges. They're just screwing us left and right. And they're borrowing your money to give 3AC billions of dollars and then screw us on the back end. It's like the, that idea of like borrowing money to give to the big players to long everything, it's not working. And I hope as an industry, 
like we could stop doing that and like figure out a different way and it's just it's 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 brutal dude it's just like I think we don't know what else is contagion right what well, like what else is going to be affected by this and the fact that we have to thing, wait weeks to see who got, files bankruptcy sucks yeah i was going to mention this earlier it seems like this whole contagion thing of like you know the dominoes falling like i could see it also being like purposefully done to like to consolidate like all the exchanges into like two or three, you know, giant ones, um, which is also like sucks, you know, like then there's these monopolies on centralized exchanges and then they're going to get, you know, favorable. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. Uh, so that's another reason to get away from it, you know. But that, that's what scares me too. And stuff. Like, Everyone's giving Sam Bankman Freed, the owner of FTX, tons of props. Yeah. Because he's coming in and saving all these companies. He's buying them up. But then you have one company who owns 70% of the marketplace. It's terrifying because it's like yeah. if they go under, like everything is like like desolate. And it, it you know what else pisses me off is like all the Bitcoin people who are just like so excited to see all these companies fail. It's like, you guys realize the more companies fail, the longer this is going to take. Like, like it might take 10 fucking years for this thing to recover now. And it's like, they laugh and it's like, what are you going to do in the meantime when everything else is going to shit? It's just like, I don't understand the, I also like, don't that understand mentality. the like end all be all finality of like Bitcoin. Like, okay, you guys were super like into technology and all this stuff. And that's why you got into Bitcoin. But then like, that's where you stop and you're like, right. I'm done with technology's done. We did it all. Bitcoin is everything. Like I won't root for any other, you know, Ethereum or ADA or anything else because it's all about Bitcoin now. Like to have that mentality is like, doesn't make sense. Like you should always be... It like looking towards the future, no matter what it is, you shouldn't be stuck believing it's going to be Bitcoin when they don't, they're not doing anything like major, yeah. like they can't. You know? Well, they're always saying it's digital gold, but then when they're like, oh, you guys don't have smart contracts and there's no use case for it, yet people are spending billions of dollars on DeFi and NFTs and stuff like that. And then when you say that to them, they say, oh, we have the Lightning Network that we can do this with. But then, like, if, if you use a Lightning Network, if you have, even understand what it is, it's it's centralized. Like, you're basically giving a Lightning Node to Amazon. They hold all the funds, and then you interact with that, right? Super fast, but you're centralizing the funds into one node every single time. And it's like, if you don't do that, then you have companies like Blockstream that centralize the funds again. So it's like... You guys aren't really fixing the problem. You're just saying um, on layer one, decentralized, but everything else centralized. And yeah. you're falling into the same problem. Whereas with like, like Cardano is not centralized yet. Like it kind of is, but it isn't because one company owns, owns all the keys right now. IOG owns all five of the keys. So it's, it's centralized now. Like hopefully they do something about it in the future. But um but their layer two stuff is, it just makes more sense to me, like seamlessly, like the fact that I could like trade JPEGs on a store makes sense to me. It's like, it's not connected to everything. I just get to utilize NFTs that way. And then if I want to do DeFi, I go to MinSwap, I do that. And it's like, it just makes more sense to me. I don't know. I think it's, it's really cool that we can uh, stake NFTs and then get a token back. Yeah. And it's like, that shit is just mind blowing. Like, I don't and know. And this is just the beginning, right? <laughs> I appreciate like, it fully. Like, like, it's so cool. It is so cool. And it's like, like trying to leave the space. It's like, where else am I going to be able to do any of this stuff? It doesn't even make sense outside of Cardano and like 
you try to leave the space and then I'm like every day looking at JPEG store, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> seeing, seeing what's moving and shaking. And then, you know, I'll go on their website and see what they're building and seeing their tokenomics. Yeah. And it's like, I can't do that with regular companies. I can't go to Amazon and see their roadmap for the next five years. You know what I mean? Like, and it's, it's all behind closed doors with Amazon and stuff like that with, with these web three companies, like these NFT companies, they're trying to make everything community-based, which is so much more fun and transparent where they're like, you know, or Disco Solaris, where it's like, we, we all have this incentive now. We all have Disco Coin. And if we want to see this company succeed, like you're going to have to participate, you know, whether you give them money or your time and energy writing scripts or writing code or something. But, but if that succeeds, then you get to participate participate in the value accrual and maybe be able to buy a house in a couple of years because you yeah. you bought a fucking jpeg like that's awesome that's so that's so uh liberating for me because it's like i have a regular job and like i'd rather just invest my money in teams that i believe in and then like while i'm sleeping they're building you know what i mean yeah and, and i think that's how you create true like true true wealth you know through yeah. time is you know this shit's risky, but like it pays off. Like it, it just does. Like I've been here yeah. since 2018 and it's like, I've been able to do so much more with my life because of that. Like, and it's like, I just think the opportunities here just keep expanding over time. And it's like infinite. It's just like, what else are these people going to think of, you know, give them more time. And it's just like, I don't know. I'm, I'm very uh, optimistic for the future. Yeah, that's awesome. You've, uh, you know, I came in here, I was down in the dumps, but uh, now I'm feeling, I'm feeling optimistic again. So that's good. Uh, good. The way you talk about it so passionately, you know, really gets, I love it, really man. gets me going. I have faith. I have faith in all these people and, um, they're just like the best and brightest of humanity and they're all in one space it's just like i mean they're building every day it's like how could you not want to participate and be a part of that and and like it's just cool when it starts to pay off and you see it it's just like i don't know and uh like i just feel like because the money there's less liquidity like all these things are compressing and compressing and compressing and like the price gets lower and lower and lower and like when something pops off it's gonna just be like fireworks man and i'd, I'd rather just hang out here and be here and wait for that to happen than sit on the yeah. sidelines and miss the boat because i'd missed the boat in 2014 with bitcoin i could have bought bitcoin at like 300 bucks and i didn't because i was too scared and i didn't understand how money worked but yeah never again <laughs> maybe people will be saying the same thing about ada in two years i think, we'll I, think I just like yeah i think it will let's leave it there eric all right guys another episode in the bag we'll talk to you next week episode um, 20 guys we did it the big two zero 21 i think isn't it is it 21 my favorite number let's go anyway We'll talk to you guys. If you're in the U.S., have a great 4th of July.